Hi, this is Andrea. Welcome back to Jewelry Design with Procreate. In this video, I will be introducing more advanced features, such as details on how to use layers and to create basic shapes quickly. If you are ready, let's get started. In last class, we have gone through basic functions of Procreate. In this class, we will dig into more details on how to utilize it. Before we do that, don't forget to download the templates for this class. For different classes, we provide different templates for your practice. The template for this class is template 1. If you already have it downloaded on your iPad, let's import the template. At the top right corner, there's an Import button. Click on it and select the templates we need. Once imported, we can see that this is a jewelry piece with a sapphire as main stone and surrounded by pearls. Next, click on Layers. We can see that different gemstones are arranged on different layers. The reason for doing so is when drawing or editing gems, the layer being edited will not affect other layers. So I like to separate different objects into different layers and combine all layers together after finishing drawing. Select the layer and it will be highlights in blue, telling us this is the layer we have selected now, and it can be edited. One thing to pay attention here is that layers on top will cover the layers below. If we use our Apple Pencil to hold on the layer with the prongs and drag it below the sapphire layer, you can see that only half of the prongs can be seen now and the other half is covered by the sapphire layer above. If we drag this pearl layer to the top, then not only the cores are missing, but also parts of the main stone is covered. So we need to pay attention to the order of layers in order to keep all the details with our design. Okay, now let me undo this and get everything back to where they were. There's this small checkbox that if we click on it, the check is gone, and this layer will be hidden. Click it again to unhide it. The end symbol here stands for normal, meaning this layer is set at normal mode. Click on it to see more different mode settings. We won't change this setting in our beginner course, so make sure each of your layers is set to this mode. And above these modes, there is a bar for us to adjust the layer's opacity. We can see the opacity of sapphire is changing. The higher the percentage is, the more opaque the layer is, and vice versa. A quick tip to adjust opacity is to tap on the target layer with two fingers. See a blue bar appeared at the top of canvas. We can now use either our finger a stylus pen to slide from anywhere on the canvas to increase or decrease opacity. Now, let's get back to Layer Options menu. Select a layer and slide it to the left. We can see Lock, Duplicate, and the Delete icons. The locked layer has lock symbol on the left side. We can make any changes to the lock layer. And it's also easy to unlock it. Simply do a left slide and tap the unlock option. As we mentioned in the previous class, to move an object, we need to tap on the transform function, which is the cursor icon on the top left. Now there's only one sapphire in this layer. So when we apply this function, only the main stone will be moved. Tap the cursor again to turn off this function. Okay, let's undo this. To move the whole piece of jewelry, we need to select all layers. So let's tap the unselected layer and slide them to the right. By doing this, we are able to select multiple layers at once. And tap transform button again. Now we can move it as one piece. 
After selecting multiple layers, we can also group them. At the top right corner, there's options for delete and group. Tap group. And all layers selected are now grouped together. Tap this arrow here to fold and unfold the group. If you want to rename the group, tap directly on it to do so. If we want to move a single object, same as previous, we can just click on a single layer and use the cursor function to move it. If we want to move the whole jewelry, tap on the group layer, which all layers on the group will be selected, and then use the cursor function to move. Everything can be moved together. Besides the layer parts, let's take a look at the adjustment function. First, make sure we are on the Sapphire's layer. And then, tap to extend Adjustments menu. Options here are more like for adding finishing touches with professional image effects. Let's try out Bloom. When we slide left or right on our screen, see there is a blue bar at the top with percentage number constantly changing. This is to show you how much you are applying with this effect. So the more we slide to the right, the higher the percentage is. And the gem is also getting brighter. You can play around and set it to a percentage that you think is optimal. Don't worry if you like your gem to be brighter or dimmer. There's no single standard. Next, let's try noise. I will have my set around 6. I suggest everyone trying out other options in adjustments. See what kind of effects will apply to your canvas and whether you like it or not. I also want to mention hue, saturation, and brightness, which locate at the top of adjustments menu. They are super useful. We can use hue to change the color of gem directly. Or use saturation to enhance or weaken the color of the gem. We may also switch to the pearl layer and fine-tune hue. So our pearls look a bit pinkish. After doing all the adjustments, we can move forward to combine all layers into one. This is quite simple. Simply use your two fingers and put across all layers you want to combine. Pinch them into one. By this step, we may move the jewelry layer out of the group we created and delete the group if you want. For the rest of this lesson, I'm going to show you how to quickly create basic shapes. So let's uncheck the box here to hide this layer for now and create a new one. Pick a brush you feel like. When we are drawing on Procreate, it has some friendly built-in functions to help users achieve results they want. For example, I'm going to draw a straight line here, which you can see it is not straight at all. But if I hold my Apple Pencil on the canvas when I finish the line for a bit, Procreate will detect it and make this line perfectly straight for me. Furthermore, I can move the ending points to wherever I want, and the line is still straight and perfect. If I wish to make a vertical or horizontal line, spare an extra finger to tap on the screen. Procreate will help me to capture some ideal angles. In addition to straight lines, Procreate also supports an ellipses. Same trick here, hold the brush when you finish drawing, and the rectangles. And we can even adjust the size of shape by moving different directions. Tap on Edit Shape for more arrangement with the shape you created. For circles and squares, while holding the brush, use your spare finger to tap on screen. You can get a perfect shape here. There are other gestures that could be really helpful when we draw. For example, Undo and redo can be replaced by two fingers or three fingers tap. Two fingers are for undo, and the three fingers are for redo. Sliding left and right with three fingers will clean up everything on the layer. 
How about sliding down with three fingers? That is a different function. Let's unhide the jewelry layer and see how that works. Sliding down with three fingers calls up copy past menu. We can find all copy, past, and duplicate functions here. Don't get freaked out with all the different gestures and features. In our future classes, we will be using them over and over again. With all the practices we do together, you will be very familiar with these gestures, functions, and tricks really soon. In the next class, I will introduce the brushes that will be used in this course. See you in the next class. Bye! If you like this video or you want to learn more about jewelry design and rendering, please subscribe my channel and turn on notification.